So hi everyone, uh, in this short demo talk, uh, we'll look at Vacu, the communication layer for Web3, and how it uses zero knowledge proofs for uh, its service network. We'll show a demo with Vacu for, we're using RLN for private economic spam protection, and what this means for you as a user and node operator. Uh, finally, we'll look at how you can actively participate in and contribute to the network yourself as a node operator, developer, or end user. And just as a warning, I gave a talk yesterday that's going to be fairly similar to this one, but this one is going to be slightly more high level and targeted towards DAP developers. So first, briefly about uh, VAC and me. So I'm director of research at VAC. Uh, we build public good protocols for the decentralized web with a focus on privacy and communication. We do applied research uh, based on which we build protocols, libraries, and publications. And we're also the custodians of protocols that reflect a set of principles. It has its origins in the status app and basically trying to improve on the underlying protocols and infrastructure and we build vacuum among other things. So as a dApp developer, uh, you, have, you might have like a front end and some smart contract and the front end could be a website, something else like a binary. But what about all the other interactions? So in the original web free vision, you had the whole trinity with Ethereum for uh, compute consensus, Swarm for storage and Whisper for messaging. A lot of decentralized applications, dApps, they make sacrifices in how they function, from the way domains work to how websites are hosted and reliance on centralized services when it comes to communication. And we see this time and time again, where centralized single points of failure systems, they work for a while, uh, but then eventually they fail. And often individual users, they might not care enough, and it's tempting for platforms to take uh, shortcuts. And that's why it's important to be principled, but at the same time be pragmatic in terms of trade-offs that you allow on top. And we'll touch more on this when it comes to design goals around the modularity of Acquias. Uh, so privacy is the power to selectively reveal yourself and it's a requirement for freedom and self-determination. And just like you need decentralization in order to get sense of persistence, you need privacy to enable freedom of expression. And to build applications that are decentralized and privacy protecting, you need a base layer, the infrastructure itself, to have those properties. Uh, Synology proofs are a wonderful new tool, and just like smart contracts uh, enable programmable money, Synology proofs allows us to express fundamentally new things. And in line with the great tradition of trust minimization, we can prove statements while revealing the absolute minimum information necessary. And this fits the definition of privacy, the power to selectively reveal yourself perfectly. And I'm sorry I don't need to tell anyone in this room, but this is truly revolutionary. Uh, technology is advancing extremely fast and often is our imagination at its limit. So briefly on vacuums, what is it? It's a set of modular protocols for peer-to-peer -peer communication. It has a focus on privacy, security, and being able to run anywhere. It's basically the spiritual successor to Whisper. And by modular, we mean that you can pick and choose protocols and how you use them depending on various constraints and trade-offs. For example, bandwidth uses versus privacy. It's designed to work in resource-restricted environments like mobile phones and in web browsers. It's decentralized, sensor-persistent, and blockchain agnostic. So here's some example use cases uh, for Vaku. So for example, Status is using it for its uh, chat functionality. World Connect is partly using it for session management. Railgun for its relay network. And you can use it for things like multi-sig coordination with, with Gnosis Safe. Uh, there are currently three main implementations, uh, JSVACU for browsers, uh, GoVACU, which is optimized for users on mobile and desktop, and then also has bindings for things like Kotlin and Swift, and VACU in NIM, which is the sort of main service node and where all the research is happening, and there's also an experimental version in Rust. Just briefly on some, some protocols that are used, so we specify how our messages are formatted uh, to facilitate things like encryptions and signatures, a relay for sending and receiving mes messages, and this is based on LPTP Gossip Sub. And then there are also protocols for li more light usage, like filter, light push and store. Um, these are node, used for no by nodes that are maybe not always online, uh, or they might have some connectivity or bandwidth restrictions. Uh, there's also re RLN Relay, uh, which is used for peer-to-peer -peer economic spam protection using CK Snarks, which I'll go into soon. And there are other products here as well, uh, but these are the main ones of interest right now. So one way of looking at VACU is as an open service network. Uh, there are nodes with varying degrees, uh, when it comes to compatibilities and requirements. Uh, for example, when it comes to things like bandwidth usage, storage, uptime, privacy requirements, latency requirements, and connectivity restrictions. Uh, we have this concept of adaptive nodes uh, that run a variety of protocols. And node operator can sort of choose which protocols they want to run. And naturally, there'll be some nodes that do more consumption and other nodes that do more provisioning. And this gives kind of rise to the idea of a service network uh, where services are provided for and consumed. Uh, this is one way of looking at sort of the vacuum network. We have a bunch of nodes with different capabilities and they run different protocols. And for the vacuum network, there are a few problems that arise here. Um, 
For example, when it comes to network spam and incentivizing service nodes, uh, we want to address these while keeping privacy guarantees of the base layer. So the spam problem arises on the gossip layer where anyone can overwhelm the network with messages. And the service incentivization is a problem when nodes don't directly benefit from provisioning of a certain service. Uh, this can happen if they're not using the protocol directly themselves as part of normal operation, or if they aren't socially inclined to provide a certain service. And this depends a lot on how individual platforms decide to use this network. In this uh, talk, I'm only going to go into the first one, but I also gave a talk uh, yesterday where I touched on the service incentivization a bit more. Uh, since the peer-to-peer -peer relay network is open to anyone, uh, there's a problem with spam. And if we look at some existing solutions for dealing with spam in traditional messaging systems, a lot of entities like Google, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, Discord, they use phone number verification. And while this is largely civil assistant, it's, it's centralized and not private at all. Uh, historically, WISP used proof of work, which isn't really good for heterogeneous networks. Uh, this things like peer scoring, but it's open to civil attacks and doesn't uh, directly address spam protection, spam protection in an anonymous peer-to-peer -peer network. And the key idea here is to use RLAN for private economic spam protection using CK snarks. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail of RLAN here. If you're interested, uh, there's some write-ups on Vact.dev by SNAS, who's been pushing a lot of this from our side. And Taylor is giving a talk which goes into the RLAN circuit in more detail uh, in a few hours in this room. Um, so, but I'll just talk briefly about what it is. So RLAN uh, stands for Rate Limiting Nullifier. It's an anonymous uh, rate limiting mechanism based on CK snarks. And by rate limiting, we mean that you can only send N messages in a given period. And by anonymity, we mean that you can't link messages to a publisher. We configure it as a voting booth, uh, where you're only allowed to vote once every election. It can be used for things like spam protection in peer-to-peer -peer messaging system, uh, systems, and also rate limiting in general, such as for a decentralized capture. And there are basically three parts to it. So you register somewhere, and then you can signal, and finally there's a verification slashing phase. You put some capital at risk, and this can either be economic, economical or social, and if you double signal, you get slashed. So each user has a secret identity key and registers a commitment of that in a contract and deposits some funds. And this makes them a member of that RLAN group. And the key to uh, withdraw that fund uh, is, is a secret identity key. And if someone knows that secret, they can take the associated funds. And for each epoch, uh, the user sends a message by proving that it's a member of the RLAN group and it reveals a shimmer secret of its secret uh, identity key. The shares derived in such a way that two of such shares in the same epoch allows construction of the corresponding secret ID key. And the secret sharing has another element, which is an application to, uh, defined identifier, which is the RLAN identifier. And with that, uh, you can sort of make the secret sharing unique for your application. So for example, if a user wants to use the same membership credentials for two different apps for messaging, uh, then it can do so without being worried about getting slashed by combining two shares from two different applications. Uh, so here's a brief recorded video. Let's see here, it's playing. So what this is showing is that on the right here you have JS which is running in browser, and you connect to your wallet, and then it sort of pulls down the state from the RLAN contract, uh, including the um, sort of number of members that are there. And then after that, uh, you generate RLAN credentials uh, locally. So that's uh, yeah, the secret key and then also the kind of the public key. Uh, and then you basically register that in the smart contract. It's going to take a while until it gets, it gets through. And then also on the left here you see in Vacu, which is sort of uh, this uh, service node written in him. Um, and that's, that's going to listen for events from the contract. And there's also this example chat application that you see in the top left. Um, will take a bit of time to go through. And then basically the next step after you have registered is going to be the signaling, right? So this is uh, using VACU in a kind of light mode, using light push. So after that, uh, here you can see on the bottom left, you see that the new key has been added. Uh, so it's receiving the public keys from the um, smart contract and basically uplink is Merkle tree because it needs that in order to do verification and slashing. Uh, now it, the transaction has been included. Let's see here. Yeah, that must be slow. One second. Right. So here you're actually sort of sending. Uh, so in this case, it's just using this very light uh, mode to connect to the vacuum network, um, and then you're sending a message. 
Uh, and once you send a message, it's going to construct a proof as well as some additional um, metadata that, that's needed. And then it's going to sort of basically propagate that throughout the rest of the network. Uh, and all the, these nodes that are running all in relay uh, will sort of verify that. Verify that proof as well as make, as make sure that the, this is, uh, yeah, the CK proof is valid, that it's not double signaling and, and it's in the right epoch and these types of things. So you can see here it's been received. Um, yeah, and it's gonna and it's gonna keep relaying it to other nodes. I'm actually gonna skip to the next one uh, here just to show how how spamming works. Well, how, is this playing? Wait. Right. So in this case, we have I think it's a Unix. The epoch is is basically like a Unix time, uh, like ten seconds. Uh, Buffer, so that means that if you send more than two messages in, in a 10 second period, uh, then that will sort of, um, you will, it will be an invalid message basically. Right, here we go. So now you're going to see in the bottom left that it's. Uh, yeah, spam. So, so spam message has been found, uh, and it's going to drop the message full of validation. So it means it's not going to propagate it to other nodes, basically. Uh, and slashing is not fully implemented yet in the in the sort of this client, but it's a work in progress. Um, yeah. So just some backup slides in case the demo didn't work here. Right. Uh, so now what? Uh, you can you can build stuff with Vacu today, uh, regardless of which platform what platform you're on. If it's a mobile browser or on a server, or whatever, you can check it to vacu.org. or we'll talk to some people from the Vacu team here. Uh, I also didn't go into too much detail of this here, but if you want to play with this library we've been building, um, you can also do this with uh, Zerokit, and this basically enables you to use all for applications uh, outside of Vacu in different environments. So maybe it's not just a browser application, but you want to do something in in Rust or with Python or whatever. Um, so that can be pretty useful because it has a CFFI API and was an API as well. And you can also run a node and this helps the network and it's a fun way to sort of get more hands-on when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer and seek infra, even if you aren't super technical. Um, yeah, and you can check out our Discord and say hi. There's a QR code here to back Discord. Here's some links. If you find any of this exciting to work on, feel free to come up to talk to me. And we're also hiring. <laughs>